Hopefully today I'll pique your curiosity about the data exploration node in SAS Model Studio on Via. I'll show you some of the things that it can do and hopefully you'll want to explore on your own and find out all of the features. It is really very useful. Here I am in Model Studio. I've used the automatically generated template for advanced template with a class target. I'm using the HMEQ dataset, Home Equity Data, which is a sample dataset that SAS provides. The first data exploration node I'm going to add, I'm going to put right after the data node. I right click Add Child Node Miscellaneous and select Data Exploration. Once my node is here, I can right click and run that node. Notice I've already run the pipeline. Now that the node is run, I can look at my results. I right click and select results. The first thing I see is my data partition summary that says I've used all my data, which is 5960 observations. I have a bunch of important inputs. Let me remind you that the HMEQ data set is a home equity data set where the target is bad, which is a one zero binary variable, meaning if it's one, you defaulted on your load. If it's zero, you did not default. Then there are a bunch of inputs like debt to income ratio, which is an interval input, job, which is a categorical input, etc. So here what this is telling us in my next graph over here that I'll expand is that relative importance debt to income ratio comes out high on the top. But we're going to find out something else from this data exploration node that's going to make us maybe rethink that. I also have my class variable summaries with cardinality. I have my class variable distributions. I can select different class variables there. And here I have my interval variable moments. I have variable name, minimum, maximum, mean, standard deviation, skewness and kurtosis, relative variability, mean plus two standard deviations and mean minus two standard deviations. Some of these would be very helpful if what I was trying to do were to screen out variables, to screen variables to find anomalies. Things like the mean plus two standard deviations, uh, the skewness and kurtosis would help me select those variables with distributions that were not normal. Let me take a minute to talk about skewness and kurtosis. Skewness indicates whether it is left skewed or right skewed. Negative skewness indicates left skewed, so the tail is very long to the end of the distribution where you're looking at frequency on your vertical axis. And you can see that when it's left skewed, the mean is to the left of the median, which is to the left of the mode. A normal distribution, if it was perfectly normal, the mean, median, and mode would all be the same. And if it's right skewed or positive skewness, the tail leads out to the right. Kurtosis tells you how tall and skinny or short and fat your distribution is. So if the kurtosis is greater than zero, it's leptokurtic or tall and skinny with depauperate tails. If the kurtosis equals zero, it's normal or mesokurtic, and if the kurtosis is less than zero, it's platokurtic or flat, and your tails are heavy. There's a lot of data that falls into the tails in the distribution. In my data exploration node results, I also see a graph where I have kurtosis on the vertical axis, and I have skewness on the horizontal axis. And we can see that debt to income ratio and value are both pretty high in kurtosis and high in skewness. Now here, when I look at my interval distributions, and I'll blow this up, I don't like these thick bins. We have a very small number of bins here. So you know what? I'm going to go back to my pipeline, and I'm going to change that in my options. I'll X out 
and close. You see here on the right, I have a bunch of options. I can select all data, test, train, or validate. I could use either importance or screening as my variable selection criterion. And here is my number of bins for interval variables, and I'm gonna make that 30. I also have the option to add cluster plots or TSNE SNE projections. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Now I'll need to rerun my data exploration node. Now we'll right click to see our results. And we'll go down to where we were at interval variable distribution. And you can see we have much more information here. I'm going to switch to debt to income ratio and look at that. We really have a lot of missing values here. So this concerns me that we've picked this as our most important variable, but we have such a high frequency of missing values. Here we can see we have more than 20% missing values, and debt to income ratio has more than any other variable, but other variables have quite a few also. So let's go back to our pipeline and look at our data after imputation. You can see this imputation node was added automatically by the advanced template, and it was added before neural networks, stepwise re uh, regression, and forward logistic regression. So remember that neural networks and regressions are not robust to missing values, whereas these three over here, forest gradient boosting and decision trees are all tree-based and tend to be more robust to missing values. But let's look at our data exploration node after the imputation, and I already put this in earlier and ran it. What do you know? Our relative importance for our imputed variables, see IMP is added before where we've imputed a variable. So we have our imp underscore delinc. Now the delinquency variable is most important, and the debt to income variable is second most important after we've imputed missing values. And we can look at our interval variable distribution. If we look at debt to income ratio, we can see this looks much nicer. So let me show those side by side. Here we see the relative importance before imputation where debt to income ratio was the most important variable. And then we see after imputation where the delinquency that's been imputed is the most important, followed by the debt to income ratio. That's a big change. Here we're looking at the debt to income ratio distribution and we see before imputation all those missing values and then we see a much nicer, more close to normal distribution after imputation, and we've distributed those missing values. I'll just touch on a couple more of these. Um, we have the target by input cross tabulations. Notice here that the blue bars are bad equals zero, meaning the person did not default, and the yellow bars are one, meaning the person did default. So when we look at the variable lev level for the imputed delinquency amount, we see if there was one delinquency or zero delinquencies, most of the people did not default. So most of them, if we roll over, we see more than 86% of the people with zero delinquencies de did not default. But if we look over here, when there were five delinquencies, we see that, you know, less than 20% did not default and more than 80% did default. So we see that, you know, as the number of delinquencies is going up, the number of people who default is going up. I'll take a quick look at our properties. And one of the things I like here is we have our data mining version. So we see this is version 2020.0.4. And here for our output from our tree split procedure or proc tree split, remember the tree split procedure or decision tree is what's used to determine variable importance. 
we see the IGR method used, we see the maximum branches per node, etc. And we can see here our imputed delinquency became the highest uh, relative importance and importance, and we can see our missing values have all been imputed. So just one more thing I want to show you before I close. If I do check TSNE projection of interval inputs, I get a 3D image. And you can see that blue is one for bad, meaning defaulted. Uh, yellow is zero, meaning did not default. And I can look at this image in 3D. TSNE stands for T Distributed Stochastic Neighbor Embedding. And it's a technique that lets you visualize high dimensional data sets and it can help you in reducing dimensions. I'm Beth Ebersole with SAS and I hope this information on data exploration node in SAS Model Studio piqued your interest and you want to try it out yourself.